Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. Welcome to a new uh, episode of The Crazy Life. Uh, I'm Brian. Joining me as usual is Heno. Howdy. And not joining us is Jen because she's sleepy. So <laughs> <laughs> She's sleepy, girl. Yeah. Um, she had too many giant turkey legs. Yeah, maybe. And, 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 and glasses of mead. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot she went to the, the Ren Fair. Yeah. At the, at the boobs around your neck fair. Yeah. <laughs> certainly. There's certainly those. I've seen enough pictures. And, and no pictures. I saw no pictures today. What's up with that? Yeah, I, it's a good question. Maybe she took them and just didn't post them. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll get to the bottom of this. It's just not right. I know. I know. So, uh, yeah, welcome to everybody, uh, you know, uh, new listeners or returning listeners. Either way, glad you're with us. And, um, yeah, I guess we just push on without Jen this week. Hopefully she'll be back next week and. You know, I'm sure it's because she's working 10.6 million hours a week. <laughs> Maybe it could be, yeah. yeah. May have something to do with it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, how was your week? I know. Uh, it was uh, pretty good, and it ended with a bit of a surprise. I got a phone call in the morning on Friday. From a friend of mine who sits on the city council of my town. Yeah. And she said, there's two spots open. One candidate is rerunning. Another candidate is dropping out. You said you were interested in doing it. Today's the last day to put in your – today's the day you have to put in your application. Oh, my. So did you do that it? Was it like – Nine in the morning. <laughs> That's a good thing to wake up to, right? Like, hey, you need to make a decision right now. <laughs> yeah, she said she'd call me back in like an hour. So she's going to try to find out if to, if Friday was the day. And, and I'm like, well, I am leaving the house to go, you know, work out at the gym and take the dogs for a walk. So, you know, I'll I'll ponder it. And uh, and so I went up there and I called I called Neil and, you know, called some friends and chatted about it. And, and Colleen never called me back. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and here's the, here's the funny part. I go online and you need five, five signatures mm -hmm. of, of registered voters. Okay. Uh, that live in the city or 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, when you said five, I was like, wow, that's actually a really low number. You know, you'd think you'd need more than that. <laughs> or 40 bucks or we'll just take money we'll just take yeah uh, 
<laughs> so since I didn't have t- time to, I mean, I, yes, I knew I could get five, six, but you know, like if you have one thing wrong, yeah. Like if, you know, if there's one little thing wrong on any of them, you're boom, you're done. So I'm like, yeah, I'll pay the 40 bucks. <laughs> right. No margin for error there. It's paid. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I did it. Did you? I actually nice. am now a candidate for awesome. <laughs> Haley city council. Uh, and there I went, I went and had lunch at my, my local diner and, while I was sitting there, I, I didn't notice it, who was behind me, but it was the city clerk. It was the uh, plan, the woman that works at the uh, planning department and the town uh, attorney were sitting behind me. And the my one of my favorite uh, waitresses over there is uh, is the um, she chairs the planning and zoning committee. Okay. So she's, you know, in with everything. And, and she said, you know, hold on a second. You know, because she said, do you know who, if anyone else is running? And I said, well, I remember there was this one guy that ran. I could see him running again, but I have no idea. And so she's like, well, I'll find out for you. And, uh, and, or she said, hold, hold on a second. And sure enough, she came back because I didn't, she was talking to somebody. So I was like, okay, somebody in here knows. Um, and she came back and told me who it was. And it's someone that has been running for, ran for two offices last year and didn't win either one of them. She's like been around for 20 years, super uber activist, like, you know, has established all of these different things in town, super well known. And then it all made sense because she's also not necessarily liked by everybody because of that. Right. Yeah. You're definitely going to ruffle feathers doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, you know, I've been to a couple council meetings. I've spoken up and people liked what I had to say and this and that. And so I think I was asked just to give her a run for her money, Man. you know, like, like give her some competition. Don't make it easy. Right. Man, fair enough, she really, right? she really actually should be running. She actually has qualifications to run for state office, mm. you know, and, and stuff. So at any rate, I, I, you know, like I said, I thought about it for a while and I was like, okay. And I, you know, I looked it up, it's, you get paid, you, you know, it's $10,000 a year. Yeah, hey, whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so I, and you know, like, as like I said, I went down there, I filed the paperwork and then I started, I spent the rest of the afternoon trying to figure out, cause we have, we have over 5,000 people in this town, which means we have to abide by Idaho campaign finance laws. Okay. That makes things very complicated. And by five or six o'clock, oh, and in the meantime, I ended up picking up um, my friend Angela's, one of her dogs. So she's she's off in Arizona doing some more training for this new um, career she's got. And so she's been farming out. You know, it's it's hard to get people to like, hey, would you take care of all four of my dogs? Yeah, you right, know, it yeah. generally doesn't happen. So they're getting farmed out everywhere. Mm-hmm. And the dogs in the last month have, have had, you know, their, their, their home got broken up. They're moving from one place to another. They're getting farmed out all the weekend. And the oldest dog is just not happy. Oh, that's too bad. And yeah. last time the people that he, he went camping with some people and he literally whined all night long. Oh, and then, um, the person that the friend that had them on Thursday night said the same thing. The dog's just not doing well and so i went and picked grizz up and and he just slept and it wasn't until later in the evening that i realized why he was sleeping is because he'd been up all night with massive anxiety sure and and he was just so tired that he slept sounds familiar yeah but then (laughs) but then it, it came back you know and it was like it's amazing how i mean it's it's Dogs wear anxiety like it, it's, you know, mouth is open, drooling, yeah. you know, constant. I mean, it's like you just, just you just see it. They're just horribly uncomfortable. Yeah. And the poor dude is just looking, you know, he's just running around. I had to eventually lock the door to the outside because he was <clears throat> looking like he was going to dig under the fence. You know, I took him for a walk. And he looked sure. like he was going to run to the other side of town, you know, <laughs> yeah. all this stuff. And yeah. And so, yeah, Trying it to was, find it his was, human, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was it was wild, and I and and uh, eventually it was like, well, is there anything we can do? And I'm like, well, you know, because Sharon's like, I'm going to the store. What can I get? And I'm like, 
you know, she's the first like, do we have any drugs? <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, there, maybe let's try a homeopathic thing first. I'm like, why don't you go down and see if you can get some valerian root? <laughs> yeah. So I gave him a big tablet of that and he finally mellowed out. But anyhow, long story short is between me learning everything there is to know about election law and visiting the banks in the afternoon and trying to figure out how to set up the campaign, what do I need to do, this and that, blah, 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 and this dog, by 7 o'clock I was just – fried my brain was fried and i was i was emotionally fried yeah because it was a really nerve-wracking decision yeah I bet. Um, you know because uh this is something i've wanted i have wanted to get involved with my community mm-hmm. government now for for a long, long time actually as as long as i've lived here i've been like you know i'm a resident i can you know i i talk to you know, my friend that's the chair of the planning and zoning, you know, I talked to her about, you know, she started on the Parks Commission, you know, and, and then eventually on planning and zoning. And, and there's a Trees Commission and there's, you know, there's a there's always all these different little boards you can sit on. Yeah. And but it's been like, oh, well, that's, you know, that meeting meets on the night that I have my men's group. So I'm not going to do it, you know, or that meeting meets on this and I, I really can't do it or blah, blah, blah. I've had all these reasons why I didn't want to do it. And 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 I've always you know, joked about running for town city council. But the other part of that is I am hardly shy on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's that. <laughs> and you should see how long it has taken me to scrub my Facebook feed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I that's... just made it to December. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a good move before it, you know, gets too far in. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I've actually had, I have to, I hate to say this, but my weekend has sucked. Yeah. I have like massive anxiety. Um, I feel like I'm an emotional wreck. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm even doing this. (laughs) Right. Uh. You know, I've got six weeks and what I realized like today, I, I've I've got a I've got a campaign slogan. I've got ideas of what I want to do. But like today, I was like, oh, cool! I can get this website. No, I can't. I have to have, have a treasurer first before I can spend any money at all. I can't even go out and buy business cards or start a website until I have a treasurer filed with the state of Idaho, Jeez. or yeah, you know, I just have to send it to Haley. And I'm just like, and I can be my own treasurer. But of course, everyone says, don't be your own treasurer. Makes sense. That yeah. doesn't look good. What, you know, and I'm just like, you know, and then, you know, oh, somebody texts Sharon about, you know, what I have on my Pinterest. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, I have to go on there and, and make everything private that is even remotely racy. Yeah. You know, and see, here's the funny thing is that. The town council member who called me, I went for a walk with on Saturday, and also one of Sharon's other friends is a serious political operative. Like she worked in D.C. for for the Democrats, and and she you know she she knows her stuff. She's got pro level knowledge, and so she's sharing all these great ideas, you know, these wonderful ideas. But she's also sharing, you know, yeah, you should do this and you should do this. And I'm just like, you know, I really don't care. <laughs> 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 you know, I just want, I yeah. just want to, you know, I want to, I want to start making my website and start making my campaign little flyer thingy. And, and so anyhow, that th- where this all brings me to is for the next six weeks, I basically have to go meet everybody in my town. Yeah. Yep. Bunch of handshaking and baby kissing now. <laughs> that's really it. Yeah. You know, it is because I mean, they need to know who you are. Otherwise, because name, yeah. name recognition wins so many elections you know like everybody knows my opponent yeah everybody yeah and that's and the she's thing got, they might go well we at least know what to expect from her yeah you know <laughs> so yeah and, yeah and and she's got and she's got a hell of a resume for local you know basically do-gooder stuff yeah like a huge do-gooder resume but that can also work against her. Yeah, definitely. She can. clearly has agendas yeah. and she clearly has – as much as you can say, oh, you know, I have a balanced view and blah, blah, blah. No, you have ideas. You know what you want to do. You're an activist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so I'm just like, well, I'll be the opposite. I'm your neighbor. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, the guy that mows his own lawn and goes down to Shorty's every Friday. Yeah. I have no agenda. I have no affiliations. 
Yeah. I have nothing to push. I just have my experience in, you know, my experience that I have for various things that are, that qualify me. And the fact that I have, I'm willing to take a fresh outlook on everything. Yep. And you pay 40 a, bucks. <laughs> exactly. I might as well get my 40 bucks for it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the bad news about this is I don't know how much podcasting I'm going to do for the next six weeks. <laughs> yeah. I was actually <laughs> thinking about imagine. that too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you've, you've got to really put yourself into that. Yeah, I mean, you so don't, we'll see. you don't have to, but I'm assuming you will. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you know, I want to, yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to just throw it out there and then, and then, you know, give it a half an effort. Yeah. Um, I actually want to give it a good effort. And, and the main reason why is like, like I said, there was a guy that ran, I think they're four year terms. So it, you know, I think it was, he ran four years ago for one of the seats. I think two seats were up. Yeah. Two seats were up four years ago. And my friend Colleen was unopposed and this guy ran for one of the other seats. And I, I don't even know who he is. Yeah. But I don't want to do that. I want to end up, even if I don't win, which, you know, I'm probably not going to win. You know, I am better looking and taller than she is, but Hey, you know, <laughs> play it up. No, <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's but, the thing too, is you never know, like doing it here may get your name noticed by people to where maybe you run again some point or something, you know, or, or I get on one of those committees. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's what, you know, I end up, I end up on the, the parks committee or the whatever. Yeah. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. Like it could, because the, the bottom line is this is, this all comes back around to fear and my, <clears throat> you know, it's like I'm a, I'm a I'm a half glass full kind of guy. I'm, you know, when I set my mind to something, I can accomplish quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I have, but I am still really afraid of new things. Yeah, and and I have really gotten comfortable, and I haven't really stuck my neck out there anywhere, and I really. I mean, I really haven't. And, you know, I've been a lot of talk, basically. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'd like to do this. I'd like to do that. I'd like to do this. Well, now you're in a position of action, right? <laughs> oh, God. That was my freaking word for the year, wasn't it? Yep. <laughs> well, it all comes back around, doesn't it? Oh, man. There it is. Yep. Jeez. This really is sticking your neck out. Um, into an uncomfortable zone though. I mean, you know, just being in any sort of public eye is that, you know, and then when you're, when you're running, you know, to where depending on how things go and like you said, you know, stuff could get pulled and yeah, you know, it's just, you don't know necessarily how it's going to go, you know, or what's going to be used against you or, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's so. the, and that's the thing where if somebody wants to dig up something on me, it, it's not, it's not hard. It's, yeah. it's not hard at all. Like I said, I have never been, you know, coy or shy. Yeah. That kind of thing. Now that does also get that, that also has its advantages. One is that I do have a presence. Yeah. Like, you know, I am not afraid to use the internet. I will be using social media to my advantage. Mm -hmm. I will be using technology because I know this other person doesn't. Ah, I've okay. seen it. You know, she doesn't have one. It's like her face pa Facebook page is boring as all can be. Mm -hmm. It's her business over and over and over and over again, you sure. know, and, and, and I, you know, I have, I, it's, you know, when the more I've been talking about it over the weekend with Sharon, because it's a big deal, cause it's going to affect her too. Sure. The more I've realized that, you know, I know a lot of people in this town. It's not like I'm some guy that just, you know, came here 10 years ago and is, has, hasn't done anything. I actually have done. I've made contact with a lot of people. Right. You know, is it thousands of people? No. You know, mm -hmm. she, she runs two farmers markets and is on several different boards in the Valley for various things, you know, transportation, education, outdoor programs. I mean, the list goes on and on. She literally knows thousands of people. Right. Yeah. You know, so, but it's, I, 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 I've accepted the challenge, I guess. Yeah. And like tonight when I was coming home from work, I was noticing my little tummy issues that I sometimes have are kind of acting up a little bit. And I know that's because I'm stressing myself out a little right now. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, um, it really 
it really comes down to, you know, I haven't made a, I haven't made a list yet, you know, a to do list in order of things. I need to do that because that's what it really comes down to is, you know, I, there, it's one, there's one thing that needs to be done at a time. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of, I mean, I'm literally looking today made me honestly look at the, the, the health of this. Yeah. You know, is this going to be healthy for me? Right. Cause I have no doubt that serving on the council, that won't be a problem. I'm sure it's pressure and you have to learn stuff, yeah. and blah, 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 but, but, but I'm willing to dedicate that. You know, it's like, I got my Fridays off. I'll dedicate all day Friday to learning whatever's on the agenda for Monday night. Right. right. You know, yeah. I have no issue with that. Um, it's this part of it because it because even though you know I want to I want to live my life by principles rather than personalities. This is about personalities. It really is, yeah. As much as you'd yeah. like to pretend that it's about the principles, it's really not because it's no. Yeah, you know, and and as I've shared on the podcast, life is good. I don't, you know, I'm I'm in a nice comfort zone right now. Right. So the question that would naturally be asked would be, you know, is it worth rocking the boat for something like this? You know? And I've, it's already been it, within a day. It was amazing how much I rocked the boat. Yeah. Like within a day. Right. <laughs> I just, I, I, mean, yeah. I mean, it was so fast. It was like, okay, yeah, I have to change this, 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 and this, and this and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, I, well, like I'm going to start doing a Gotham podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Yeah. You know, I could get back to it later in the year, right. but I can't do that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I need to set set phasers on, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you got to, you know, figure out where your your new boundaries will be, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's – it's 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 good news and it's bad news. And, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about talk about it on here because it it, it is a – I mean, it really – it's it encompasses so many things that have gone on in my life in the last year or so that I've shared on, you know, on this show and with you and, yeah. you know, with my friends and, and that kind of thing. And, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's so wild, you know, that, that I started the year talking about action <laughs> Yeah, and look where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You didn't know where the the journey was going to take you, but here you are. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I really didn't. Anyhow, yeah, that's basically my week. <laughs> that's. I mean, that's a pretty eventful week. <laughs> you know that it is. It's a lot of change, and you know, uh, or I'm scared shitless. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the sure. Language. Yeah, I mean, I am. I am. I'm honestly freaked out right yeah, now. I would be. T- oh well, I wouldn't but, even do it. But <laughs> well, yeah. I'm like, well, I'm literally like, what am I doing? I have no. I, I mean, I, I I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Right. I just have. You know what? I. You know what? I have no idea what I'm doing, but I have faith in what I'm doing. Right. Which is, which is, the the comfort I have is that yeah. is that. Well, that's the thing. The stuff you don't know about you can learn you know it's not you know they're not things you can't pick up at some point and read or or learn along the way you know so it's there's that about it you know it's it's not something where you have to have i don't know some inherent talent about it or whatever yeah. you know you can just learn everything on the job yeah and there's 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 certain things you can do right and there's and well and the, the like I said, this, the serving on council doesn't bother me because it's, I mean, that's what I've done with homeowners associations. I've sat in board meetings yeah. and we have board packets and you look at legalities and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that, that's the part that's actually easy for me. I mean, I can research the heck out of something. Yeah. It's this campaign part, you know, that, that there's, there's that, you know, you can do, you can do a lot of things wrong. Although there's really, you know, there's only, I mean, there's, there's some things that you can really do wrong, but for the most part, all it takes is effort and willingness. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like, uh, like the friend of mine was saying yesterday, she's just like, you know, you basically have six weeks that you have to go and meet everybody. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, you know, I hate to, I hate to, I hate to make it, you know, seem like a mountain, but it's really that, but she said, but it's really that simple. And I'm like, I know it's that simple. Yeah. It's literally that simple that I have to introduce myself to the entire town, yeah. you, you know, in a way. And what are the best ways to do that? Uh, but the 
the part that, you know, talking to Neil was huge because, you know, he and I have a very similar history in the endeavors we've taken on, what makes us freak out and just run away instantly. Yeah. You know, it's in our personality. And one of the things is, is to be honest, I really don't care what people think about me. Right. Which is a good thing. And I, and, and if somebody wants to make a big deal out of this, it's just like, um, it's a city council. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. You know, it's like, who cares? You know, it's like if somebody, if we, Neil and I were talking about, like, if somebody started making a big deal out of podcasting, I mean, like, it's just a podcast. I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, it's, there's, there's, there's way more bigger issues in our lives yeah, than, yeah. than this. Like, I have no qualms with. And so I, I you know, and, and like I said, I'm losing. I don't care if I lose. Yeah. You know, if I meet people and if I, if I, uh, you know, because honestly, my motivation is I'd like to give back to to, this, to my town. Yeah, I mean, I really would. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, to, and it sets you up to either do that or, like you said, you know, maybe end up with a different opportunity that you know, yeah, still is serving or whatever. Yeah, it would be very satisfying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, All right. Wow. So so yeah, as we go, you know, it'll be a little touch and go. I I I think I think you know I, to be. To be perfectly truthful, if I so you know right now I do, I do the crazy life and I do Gotham Lights and it's like I, Gotham Lights is done. There's just that is not a priority. However, you are you and Jen are extremely important to me and and, in, <laughs> and everyone else out there. Yeah, you know this is this is the place where I come to check in. This is my this is the sounding board. This is uh, this is my place for catharsis. It's for you know so many right. things I get out of this and I'm just like. You know, I, I'm going, I, I, I have a feeling I'm going to need this <laughs> yeah. support. So that's why I'm not saying anything right. overt, but I am saying that I'm going to be very busy coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So. Well, you know, <laughs> at least it's not for, you know, you're not just like shying away from the podcast or you're not, um, you know, it's not a situation where it'd be like a depression or an anxiety kind of pulling away from everything, you know? So it's for a good reason, <laughs> you know, and, you know, Hey, whatever happens, happens, you know, it's, yeah, you know, we'll see. That's it. Yeah. Um, so how you been? <laughs> th you know, last week I talked about how I had, um, uh, you know, exercised a few days and was, you know, excited that I had gotten started on that this week. That all went right in the bin <laughs> <laughs> and the, but you know, I, I'm, I'm the type that I used to make excuses for everything. I'm trying not to do that anymore. I'm trying to just call a spade a spade with, with myself, you know, mm -hmm. but I think I had good excuses this week, which is one, I had a migraine from Tuesday until late last night, which Ugh. was all sorts of fun. Um, and it wasn't like a, a, you know, it was a, I'm going to like, I get up, go eat dinner, go right back in and lay down like that kind of migraine just shut me down all week, basically. So uh, there was that, you know, when you have stuff like that, you don't really feel like doing much of anything. No. And the other reason was I ran out of my blood pressure medicine and I went to the pharmacy and they were like, yeah, we can't give you any, you know, to even get you through anything because, you know, you don't have an active prescription. I was like, great. So I called my doctor's office and uh, I told the woman, I was like, please tell the doctor this is urgent. I don't have any of this. And, you know, weekend is coming up, you know, like I need this for, you know, and, uh, she was like, oh, okay, well, the doctor's really good about, I'm like, well, can you please mark it urgent though? You know, she, oh, okay. Yeah. They didn't call it in. So, cause I mm. called over the pharmacy just to make sure, cause you know, sometimes a pharmacy will get something, but they'll get to it the next day. Well, I didn't want to wait till the next day, you know? So I called and I was like, Hey, did they call this in? Like, nope. And I talked to the head pharmacist and he's like, let me check, double check the fax machine and whatnot. You know, and he's like, nope, nothing. I was like, mm. man, you know, cause that was the whole point of me telling her that it was urgent, <laughs> you know, is like, I need this. This isn't like, oh, I'm on my last refill. I'm going to need a ref, you know, a prescription, another prescription soon. It's a, I took my last one today. I don't have any more. And this is the weekend, <laughs> you know? So anyway, because of that. I've been, I don't know what it is, but the last couple of days, I mean, I can feel, I feel different 
because I haven't had that medicine. Like I can feel my heart beating harder and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, by taking that Wellbutrin, one of the side effects of that can be elevated bre- uh, blood pressure. And it's Ooh. like, so I'm unregulated and I'm taking something that could be pushing could me have, higher. Yeah. You know, so it's like, ugh. Wow. So there's the other reason why I didn't want to work out because I didn't really want to push my heart rate any higher, you know. Because <laughs> um, I, mm. I wouldn't be able to, like, calm down probably real well afterward because I've I've been running, like, red line anxiety this whole time. And, wow. Yeah, it's it's not been good. <laughs> and, um, you know, on the other side of it, I've I've tried to not let the stuff get me down. You know, and, um, you know, but along with this other stuff, I'm feeling really jittery inside. Like I was telling Tony on uh, salty language that, you know, how in the flash, how he can just vibrate his hand and put it through stuff. Yes. I kind of feel like I could do that right now. (laughs) Yeah. That's how I feel inside, you know? And, uh, you know, it's really annoying and I'm, I'm, I'm having, like, I showed you already, but, you know, like, I'm having motions in my hands and legs that I can't, I'm not controlling them. And my thumb will start moving or my hand will start moving and shaking. And um, the only other thing it, I was thinking is, you know, it could be, um, oh, and I've been having, I don't, do you remember when I talked about brain zaps? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm having those again. And, yeah. And I'm like, man... Because for all the good that the Wellbutrin's doing, this might not be – like I can't tolerate this shaky feeling. So I'm hoping it's just because I don't have the blood pressure medicine that once I get back on that, I'll be fine. But, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'm not going to worry too much about that yet because that, that's the plan is get the prescription and then, you know, go a couple days and see how I feel. If I'm still feeling jittery and stuff, I you know, I got to call my psychiatrist and – say, Hey, I don't think this is good. (laughs) Yeah. Um, you know, that way they can ease me off of it, even though I've only been on it for like two weeks, but still, I, you know, I don't want to go cold Turkey. We already learned that lesson, kids. Yeah. (laughs) It doesn't work. (laughs) Not uh, Well, it's weird because the stuff I'm having, the brain zaps, the, um, like my legs kind of just, you know, like jolting and stuff that feels like in, in the, the nervousness, I feel like I'm going through withdrawal. Like, that's what I feel like. And the blood pressure Mm. medicine is not addicting. There's no reason I should be having this kind of reaction. So it's like the only other thing I've changed is the Wellbutrin. You know, so we'll see how that turns out. I'll obviously update everybody next week. But, yeah. And then, like I told you, you know, I have to go go to the dentist. I have a tooth, my wisdom tooth removed tomorrow, which I'm happy about. I want done, but... I, you know, before every Ugh. doctor's appointment, I'm always super nervous and it's like, man, <laughs> you know, cause wow. I, I assume I'm going to be a mess tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, you know, if I get in there, they may, you know, may be like, eh, maybe let's calm you down first. Hit me in the head with a hammer or something. I don't know. Well, that's just a lot. Yeah. It's really annoying, you know? Um, but I will say this, even with that stuff going on, I renewed my ID this week, which cool. because it expires, it's coming Saturday because my birthday. And um, so I did that. I what else did I do? I checked four things off my to do list in the last two days, which is huge for me. <laughs> you know, that's awesome. I called somebody. I made a phone call. I can't remember who it was to now, but there was a phone call I'd been putting off. I made that, you know, and it's like. Like I said, it's like it sucks because having been on this Wellbutrin, I like the extra energy I have, but I don't like the fact that I feel like it's probably pushing me past my limit, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I said, hopefully the blood pressure is the real – I mean, if so, that's that's a real eye-opener for me and my blood pressure too. Um, if it makes this kind of difference just being off it a few days, it's – yeah, I really got to get my butt in gear and get some changes made. <laughs> um Dang it. There was something else I was going to mention, too. I can't remember. Oh, and this ties into our topic today, but I wrote a blog last night, finally. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I haven't written one in – it's been a long time. And, um, you know, I revisited a topic I had talked about in a previous blog, which was feeling like you're never enough. 
Um, and the reason I did it was because there's been quite a few people that I talk with online that just really seem to be going through this right now, like really struggling with it. And it, it's a, you know, it's a real pain in the butt, you know, it, it's tough to overcome this. And, um, but before we get into the topic totally, I want to mention one other thing, which is the day we're recording this, which is Sunday, um, is World Suicide Prevention Day. That's right. And, you know, I posted a couple things earlier, as I generally do when these days roll around, you know, basically saying, hey, I've been there. There's help. You know, please seek it out kind of a thing. And um, it's amazing how posting that, how many comments I've gotten from people that are like, you know, I'm so glad you're still around, you know, blah, blah, just giving me compliments, which was not at all why I did it. I just did it because I want people to talk more about this stuff so that it lessens the stigma, you know, but it's still nice when people are like, Hey, you're awesome. You know, (laughs) (laughs) you know, the ego feed never hurts, especially when I'm feeling loopy the rest of the time this week. Um, (laughs) but it was just amazing. Like people were retweeting it. And, you know, it was just cool cool because it's like, see, when people are retweeting it, they're putting that in front of their, you know, Twitter followers. And maybe it gets goes from there. And that's the point, you know, get people to read these things and hopefully talk to people about this kind of stuff so that we can cut down on the amount of suicides or people feeling the need for it. You know, it's it's so awful. You know, also, uh, September is uh it's National Recovery Month for the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, and and I wanted to bring that up too. Is is uh, just keep an keep an eye out for it. There's a there could be events in your area. There could be you know awareness things, campaigns, various stuff going on this month about it. You'll probably see hashtags on it. Yeah. So you know, pay attention and share it. If there is something going on in your area, help you know yeah. help spread the word. That kind of thing. Yeah, even if it doesn't affect you, you know, directly, you know. Spread the word because it may affect somebody else, you know. So, you know, that's that's what like with, you know, me write or uh, that tweet that I wrote. That That's the whole point of it is hoping that, like yeah. I said, it just – and I've seen a bunch of them today, which is great. I love reading so many of them to where they're like, hey, I was suicidal. I got help. I'm I'm in a much better place now. It's It's so good to see that from so many people, you know. But then there's also the other side of it, which is I've seen some real heartbreaking ones, you know, like – one was a, a woman, I can't remember her username now, but um, she posted a picture and it was like of her kids and her husband. And she's like, this was taken two days before he, he took his own life, you Ugh. know, and, and they're all smiling and happy looking, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and it's like, you know, you read those two and you're like, oh man, but it's like, that is the feeling right there. That's the feeling for the catalyst, you know, yeah. that's, that's what you got to take and go, no more of this, no more kids without a mom or a dad because they felt, you know, they felt the need to kill themselves or, you know, like, let's stop this, you know, and yeah. we'll never completely get rid of it, you know, probably, but it's the idea that, you know, every one number less is, is, you know, yeah, a much better place. And when I keep reading that like suicide rates are going up for teens and stuff because of, you know, bullying and various issues. And it's like, this has got to stop, you know, we can't, we can't do this. So the the uh, uh in their little like kind of recovery month mission statement yeah. the last sentence they have here is so great it says recovery month spreads the positive message that behavioral health is essential to o- overall health yeah. that prevention works treatment is effective and people can and do recover yep and that's uh, it's just such a powerful message for me because it's a message of hope and I, I have a yeah. uh, not really a friend but you know she's someone that i that you know, we, I've gotten to know a little bit and she's going through a really rough time right now. And, and, and unfortunately one of her tools right now is, is vague booking. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what that is, it's putting stuff up on Facebook, but not being specific about the reasons for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and really it's, it's, it's fishing generally, you know, like not in the scam term, but in, you know, like you're kind of fishing for people to, you know, it's really yeah. a way of reaching out without reaching out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but but there are she has posted some things that are are uh, are are topics. However, you don't know what the motive of it is. OK, you kind of get an idea of what it is. But it was just a reminder that that, you know, at. You don't know, you know, like I would have never have guessed that 
this person was struggling with yeah. something in their life yep. and was trying to do the whole, I can handle it. Yeah. And it's amazing you know, trying to how be many strong. people, yeah, it's amazing how many people are doing that. Yeah. You know, I did that for a long time. Like I said, nobody around me really knew how bad it was. They might've felt that I was depressed or whatever. They had no idea, you know, because I, yeah. I hit it so well, you know? And, and now something has happened and as a result of it, and it's like, okay, you know, no, I'm not strong. No, I can't, can't handle this. Yeah. You know, what do I do? And, you know, it, it's, you know, to see community and, and, and people come in and, and try to be helpful. But ultimately, you know, it's that there's, there's despair in there yeah, and it's crushing, you know, it's just crushing. And that's why I think any sort of positive message, you know, that, that, you know, I know I've, been trying to sometimes you know it's i always have a hard time with that when people do that type of stuff online but yeah, if yeah. i have something i i believe that would actually be useful i'll i'll chime in mm -hmm. and i've been trying to be positive um you know because it here's a person that's that's unsure about their faith that's unsure about you know their their family is unsure about what's going on and i'm sure. like who it's a recipe for you know going the wrong way yeah going the wrong way sure. yeah, yeah exactly whether it's some sort of a self-medication or you know worse you know that's yeah. yeah and that's the thing is you notice that and it's like all right let's try to you know help her put the brakes on before she you know really slides backwards here yeah and, you know like let's give some positive solutions like throw some things out there that are simple because it really you know there's one thing yeah. i was reminded of my my men's group this last week is uh there's a reason why we try to keep things simple at least in 12-step programs yeah because our brain, you know, I I was a compli complicated person and simple solutions are the best solutions for yeah. me because I can already overthink stuff, you know, and when it's when it's kept really simple, yep. it's a it's a great strategy. <laughs> it is funny, though, because, you know, I still have a tendency to overthink simple things, you know, um, you know, it's funny. I've seen a lot of people do it like last week. Tony and I did the Q of the W, which if you don't listen to Salty Language shame on you and um no i'm kidding <laughs> uh but it's our question of the week and tony you know we were curious what people's top three albums of all time were and i had people asking me like well what do you mean and it's like no don't overthink it just right yeah, now just what are your top there. three tomorrow it might be different five minutes from now it might be different just right now hit us with three of you know just three of your favorite albums even and that was the thing is I was telling people, I'm like, don't overthink this. You know, I was like, it's really simple. And I was, you know, I was like, I broke mine down in a, cri you know, into criteria of much like you, you know, you did the desert island one. Yeah. You know, I, I did mine based on what do I always go back to and play over and over and front to back, you know, like yeah. not play a song or two, but I'm listening to the whole album, you know? And, you know, I told him, I said, so you can do that. I said, or just like I said, pick three that you think are awesome. You know, I mean, there's tons of albums that people love. You can't narrow that down to the best three of all time. And, you know, I mean, you're going to cause controversy, you know, yeah, <laughs> like Rolling Stone does all the time with it. You know, every time they put a list, people are always like, you know, so, but I, I have a tendency to do that with really simple stuff sometimes is, you know, and I've done that a lot in the past. I'm trying again, that's one of the things I'm working on. Which is, you know, not trying to read someone else's mind, not project what they're going to say, you know, those kind of deals. Because that's usually what happens is I'll, you know, something will happen and I'll be like, like, oh, no, did I this? Did, did, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. without getting into specifics, a friend of mine uh, had a surgery and I posted asking um, kind of uh, how it was after. And I was like, my mom had the same thing and she was shocked when she saw it. But I didn't say the my mom had the same thing part. So when you read it, mm. it makes it sound like my mom looked at that person and was like, ah, you know, and that wasn't the case <laughs> at all. And I'm like, you know, so I immediately or, you know, like the next day I thought I was like, oh, you know, and I, I went. <laughs> <laughs> so from that point till they talked to me again, I was like, oh, geez, I hope they didn't take it that way. <laughs> you know, like so I'm I'm thinking the whole time oh, they're going to, you know, hate me. And well, but it wasn't the case. You know, she knew what was going on but it's still my head will do that you know it'll obsess that whole time in between and it's like yeah you know uh, so but I, I i didn't let it you know kill me like it did in the past it's like look you know you put a thing there you apologized yeah. even if they did take it the wrong way you've apologized since and you know whatever yep. so 
Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how simple or how complicated things are for me. I can make them complicated, you know? Yep. It's, it's my mutant power, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So how, how, how's the response been to the blog? Really good. Actually. I, I posted, I posted it last night <clears throat> and posted, um, a, you know, a comment about it on, uh, Instagram and put the link in my bio. So people, you know, cause you can't copy and paste from Instagram proper. Uh, you have to put it in your bio or put it in a story, I think. And then you can put it in, I don't know. It's, but anyway, uh, but I've had a few people that were, you know, um, basically telling me that I am enough. And also I had a few that were like, wow, this really resonated with me. You know, I had a guy contact me last night and, uh, he was like, man, this is exactly what I needed right now. Mm, and he's cool. like, I'm going through a rough spot. And this is, a, I've talked to him off and on, you know, and stuff. And it's, you know, I was like, yeah, yeah I was like, well, good. I'm glad that's exactly why I do it. You know, is I, first of all, I'm doing it for the catharsis, you know, I'm, get out yeah. of my head. You know, because never enough is something that goes through my head all the time. And, um, you know, so it gets it out of my head a little bit. And then like him reading that stuff, you know, you go, wow, I'm not alone. There's someone else is dealing with the same thing. And it's, it helps, you know? Yeah. I, I love it when I find an article and I read and I'm like, oh my God, that's me. You know, like it, mm. I do that exact same thing. And it's like, you're like, okay, me and this person share something and this is, you know, yeah. And, and you know, you're not alone. That's things like, I know I'm not alone in all this stuff I'm going through. I know tons of people that, you know, I don't mean personally, no, I just know, you know, in yeah. the population, tons of people are dealing with the same stuff, Yeah, you know, but it makes you feel like you're all alone. <clears throat> so yeah, I was really, really happy with that. I, it's, you know, um, I don't know how many people went and read it. But because <laughs> I didn't look at the numbers because oh, you didn't. Okay. No, because I'm the type that if I look at the numbers, I'm going to obsess on the numbers. So I'll probably yeah. wait like a week and then maybe I'll look at it or something. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was, you know, it always makes me feel good when somebody gets something out of something like that. You know, well, and it's you've got to be stoked that you, you know, you you got one done. Yeah. Oh, Totally. And it's funny too, because the way my hands are shaking, it was not easy to type because <laughs> I'm hovering my hands over the keyboard, you know, in proper typing fashion yeah, yeah, yeah. and my, my finger will just like jump and I'll hit a key and then I have to delete and, you know, I had to keep dealing with that. Um, so yeah, that was, that was not fun, but you know, whatever. Uh, so yeah, if, if anybody wants to read it, I'll have the link in the show notes. And I also, I'll tell you at the end of the show, if you just want to go to it or whatever, um, you know, and if you read that one, if you want to read my previous one, just scroll down on the same page. They're all right there on one page. You just scroll and, you know, they're both called, one's called Never Enough. The newest one's called Never Enough 2. Cause, <laughs> that's awesome. Cause I have a feeling that I'm going to write a three. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, even if it's to say, Hey, I'm not feeling this anymore. You know, it's a, yeah. it, it was three years ago that I wrote the first one. So I read it last night and I was like, okay, well, what's changed? And, uh, you know, and then I, decided to write this one and, you know, so kind of a check in on myself from that angle. That's cool. Yeah. And I, I plan to do another one this coming week. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I've said that every time and <laughs> I don't think I've ever held up to it. So, but I am going to try. So what's, what's going to be your, uh, uh, what, what, as far as the, you know, physical exercise thing. Yeah. Where, where's your head at with that now? I, I want to do that stuff, <clears throat> but the way, like I said, the way I'm feeling it's, you know, cause like even my legs, when I'm standing, my legs are like shaking. So okay. it's going to be hard to do yeah. some, it's just, I was like, you know what? I'm just, I feel overwhelmed with what I've already kind of got going. And it's like, I'm just mm -hmm. going to not, yeah. not beat myself up on the other for the week. And then hopefully, that sounds good. you know, hopefully in a day or two, I'll be back on the other medicine and then yeah, I'll yeah. get back to it. <clears throat> hopefully. I, Good plan. Yeah. Cause I don't want to stop, you know, I don't want to yeah. not do it anymore. It was something that I need to start and I want to do, but you know, like I said, I just feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually made it on, on my day off on Friday. Like I was saying, you know, I was like, Oh, I'm going to go to the gym. 
And, and it's wild. I got up there and a lot of our, you know, the homeowners, you know, see me in the gym and they're like, what are you, you know, what are you doing in here? Yeah. You know, aren't you working? I'm like, Oh, you know, I work on Sunday. I have Fridays off and I actually made it up here. which is so rare. It felt really good. I yeah. mean, it, it really did feel good to go up there. And, and I really, I, I was like, oh, well, you know, like, like I've been doing, it. it's like, you know, I'll, I'll go an hour until I feel you good. And then I took the dogs out for a walk and, um, you know, it was, it, it's just, it's just a good reminder to me that, that, and, and I'm a little worried about this right now about health, you know, about it'd be really easy for me right now to be too tired, too stressed, too whatever with what's going on. And yep. one of, that's one of the things I, I really want to make sure I don't do mm-hmm. is like, all right, I know I need to make a commitment, but I also have things that I'm already committed to. Yeah. Right. And like one of them is to continue, you know, I've, I've been feeling really good going, working out and everything like that. So I don't want to lose that. And the other one is I, you know, I had, I have things that I'm in the middle of, like I have a, I, I'm playing guitar at a wedding next week and it's like, yeah, I need to practice. Yeah. I need to practice every night for this. This is a friend of mine that that is going to take a certain amount of priority. Sure. And, you know, and, and, and it's the, the other part of it was also like, okay, well, you know, what else can I, like, I had a few things that I needed to repair around here and throw up on eBay. So it's like, okay, let's get those done in the next couple of days while, you know, while things are getting worked out and and get those things out there. But the one thing I really do need to keep in mind is not to start slacking on, on, on things that are important to me. Right. Especially Um, the stuff that you feel is the, um, uh, uh, essential self-care. You know, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. If anything, I should probably, you know, it's good that to talk this out loud is because if anything, I should probably double up on those things right now. Yeah, it is the best time to, again, it's like going to therapy when you're feeling good, you know, it's, that's the right time to go because when you feel bad, you're not going to want to do it. So that's it. If you start giving yourself a break here and there, <laughs> then you end up with a week with no exercise and yeah, no, no, that's really it. Yeah. That's understandable. So, so I uh, I mentioned to Heno uh, about us talking about the feeling like you're not good enough or you're not enough. Um, because like I told him, you know, a lot of my on, uh, people online have kind of been going through this. I've seen people posting about it on their, you know, Twitter and different stuff. And I always hate reading it because I know what it's like. You know, I, I deal with it all the time. And I hate it, you know, just like anything. I hate to read that other people are going through it, you know, um, because it's it's a really hard thing to overcome. Um, you know, I read one of the articles I read today um, talks about how you almost like you can't just use a technique and get over this. Like you have to kind of dig into your head a little bit to find the root problem and work from the root problem out is the best way you know, to deal with it. And I can see that because no matter what someone tells me right now, I have to believe it. And if I've been not believing it for years and years and years, you can't just say, Oh, you're great. And I go, Oh yeah. Okay. You know, it just doesn't, it's hard to just do that. I mean, I can say it, but then there's the not believing it part, you know, (laughs) and the goal is to actually feel that way. Um, so I found this article that talked about, or it's got, you know, just some talking points. It's a seven, it's from tiny, tiny Buddha.com. It's seven things to remember when you think you're not good enough. And I just like the talking points on this because it's, um, like I said, this is such a hard topic for, to deal with. You know, I, I know plenty of people that, you know, they've been in one bad relationship after another and they're kind of like, you know, I'm going to die alone. I'm going to, you know, like mm, they yeah. go into that, like, why am I not enough for somebody? Why do they need yeah. this or why can't, you know, and I get it, you know, pretty much anybody who's been dumped gets it to, you know, some extent because you're probably going to be like, you know, why, what was wrong with me? You know, what did I do wrong? Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, now picture that being in your head with everything you do. <laughs> You know, very frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first point on here is, and this is a great one. This is one that that I need to really pay attention to, <laughs> is the people you compare yourself to compare themselves to other people too. I love that one. Yeah, that one's really good. And, you know, because when I was, uh, the last time I was in school um, for illustration, 
I was constantly looking at what other people were turning in going, geez, like I don't have a prayer. You know, like if this is the kind of competition that's going to be in the world, I'm never going to make a cent. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? Stop for a minute and think about it. And I'm staying in the art world here or music. Either one really pertains is yeah. no matter how terrible a song is, there's probably somebody who likes it. Everybody's got what are referred to as guilty pleasures. You know, the songs that everybody hates, but you love, you know, and same with art. There's tons of art that is considered really bad art, but it sells. You know, I've read comic books where I'm like, this art is garbage, but I bought every issue of it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's because of the writing. But it's, you know, but then on the same note, there's other people who will look at that and go, oh, that's a really cool style, you know. So, you know, the fact and if you keep in mind that other people are comparing themselves to someone else, too, I think you realize you start to realize this is a normal behavior like this is not me being crazy. Other people do this too. And, uh, you know, so don't beat yourself up as hard on that kind of stuff. Really. The first thing is don't compare yourself to others. If you can avoid it, that's, that's a terrible mistake to go down. <laughs> um, but it's natural. A lot of us will do that. You know, like looking at people's Facebook page, which we talked about on a previous episode. Uh, I believe that was the FOMO episode, wasn't it? I think so. Think, yeah. yeah. And, you know, comparing yourself, your life to others' lives and stuff, it's, you know, you won't find many wins doing that. Or if you do, it's the wrong kind of wins. You know, it's like the schadenfreude kind of wins. Yeah, it's you true. Know? And it's like, do you really want those kind of wins? You know, so. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Unfortunately, the, the, the one way that, that, I think that we finally get an opportunity to realize that that it's other other people are doing the same thing that we are is it seems like when somebody that we imagine should be fine that we imagine has like whatever all the happiness in the world yeah. or, or whatever and it finally comes out where they're just like, you know, I'm miserable. I'm not, I'm not happy. I wish I could have what you had, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's like recently there was like, you know, Sinead O'Connor was, you know, had a freak out somewhere. Like she was in a hotel room in the United States and, and, you know, it's like, oh, huh? What? Like what, what's <laughs> going on here? You know? And everyone's like, and it's like, it's like struggling with mental health issues. Yeah. And, and, and really being in a bad spot and you sit there and you go, whoa, 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 how could that person, you know, and it's like, it, but it, it's true. You know, it's like, we all have our, you know, that's what, any, that classic phrase, you know, comparing, you know, my, my inside with someone's outside, Yep, you exactly. know, I'm making a, I'm making a value judgment on myself based on what I see somebody is pr presenting to me on the outside. Yeah. It's yeah. That, and again, there's, there's no win in that, you know, you, it's, it's just chasing, uh, something down a rabbit hole and it's a bad, bad idea, you know? And yeah. And the side, you know, the one thing is, is you're, you're judging yourself on, or it's, it's, you're being unfair to yourself. Exactly. Yep. I mean, you, 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 it's almost, you know, it's like you, you've chosen an avatar really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you, why don't you create an avatar that looks like something that, you know, rather than, than something that you wish you had, why not create an avatar that's more real? You know, uh, yeah. you know what I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. at? Kind of like, you know, it's like, why do we pick the one that's horrible to right. achieve? Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you're making it up out of whole cloth. Why not pick another one? You exactly. Know? Yeah. It's like, okay, hey, uh, go pick out a fabric to make a pillow with. And you just pick out the ugliest one. They're like, there's all this fabric. Can you pick that? <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. It's like, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is. And, you know, I there's um, uh, artists that I've seen in the past where – People will ask them, you know, like, oh, how did you do this or whatever? And not looking for, like, technique tips necessarily, but what they're wanting them to tell them is how they do their style, you know? Mm. And a lot of the artists are like, don't worry about how I do it, you know? Just do it your way, you know? And 
what I love seeing is I love seeing the evolution of like in comic books. I love seeing the evolution of an artist. You know, they'll start out with one style and then you can see at some point that they're, they probably got bored with it because you start seeing them experimenting a little bit. It's a little different here. Maybe they're using a new tool or something, you know, and there's a guy named, um, oh, was it Dave John or David Johnson that he does, um, he's done a bunch of, of comic covers and, and stuff. And, uh, um, he, oh, a year or so ago, two years ago, he really started getting into, there's a, a pen that, um, it has, it's a brush pen, um, that has like ink in it. Well, if you use it while it's full, you can, because it's a brush, you can either lay down a really thin, nice line, or you can lay the whole brush down. You know, you can vary your weight of the line. And he also learned that as it dries out, that that gives you a technique also. Oh. You know, so he started doing what's called like dry brushing and painting where, you know, you're not, mm-hmm. there's no paint. You're just moving the paint around with a dry brush. And he started doing that more and more. And it gave his stuff such a different look, you know, that it was like, you look at it, you didn't even have to read his name on the front. You go, that's it. Just, yeah. You know, and that's the thing. He just, at one point, I mean, he's still drawing essentially the same, but now his shading or a background will be a little different because of this, these other techniques he's employed over the time, you know? And it's like, I don't want, like, I looked at that and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And it's like, but I don't want to look, I don't want to look at his artwork and go, Oh, I'm going to copy him. You know? Cause if you were going into that world, that's not how you get recognized. You know, yeah. if you look too much like this artist, people will go, uh, you know, you look like a knockoff of this guy and he does it better, yeah. you know? <laughs> so yeah, that, well, that was the old, remember the old Ray Charles part of that, you know, his story is, was always like yeah. that. It's like, wow, he's amazing. He sounds like this guy, this guy, and this guy, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but who is he, you know? And, yep. and it really reminds me from a, um, a recording or, and it, it's music. It doesn't matter what it is, is you can spend all your time on the internet researching and figuring out what other people are using yeah. and how people are doing stuff and coveting this or that. Or you can spend your time doing whatever it is that you want to do. And right there is my biggest problem. Same um, here. Because <laughs> I used to fall and into that. Is that is part of this. Yep. I used to fall into that category of, okay, like I look at what the artists use and I get the same stuff. You know, now I never was like, oh, I'm going to be just like them. But it was still the idea that, you know, a lot of times people think that if you get the tools, you can do the work. And it's like, no, the reason his stuff looks so good is because, first of all, he's mastered his tools or has put in a lot of work with those tools. That's the thing. And it's not the tools don't make the artist. You know, you can be terrible at guitar and still play guitar in a band. You know, (laughs) I mean, there's all sorts of articles all over about how different bands, guitarists are garbage, but they're selling out places, you know? So, um, and same with art, you know, you can look at a lot of art and go, ugh, you know, but like I said earlier, you know, somebody else's cup of tea and that's fine. But, you know, I learned that you definitely, you know, if I sit down with the same marker or that same pen as that David Johnson guy, you know, I'm not going to immediately produce that work just because I bought this pen. If so, yeah. that pen would have been more than $10. Yeah. <laughs> that pen would have been astronomically high, <laughs> you know. So that's always something to keep in mind is, you know, like you said, instead of uh, researching and all this stuff, it's like just just put the work in. Yeah. You know, there's so many people I've known in art and stuff that they'll get to be like 30 years old or 40 years old and they'll look at like, you know, again, a comic book artist or something and they'll be like, man, you know, I, I wish I could do that. And it's like, put the work in. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's what I've told myself, you know, and it's part of my frustration the last time I was in school was uh, I would draw and it didn't. And I mentioned this in my blog, actually, is it didn't look on paper like it did in my head. So I'd get mm. mad. And instead of getting mad, what I should have done is gone. You need to practice. You need to get better at the technique. That's how you get better at, you know, if you just sit down and draw a person and you've never drawn a person before, the odds of you doing it perfectly are not good. If you sit down to draw a person and you've drawn a person a thousand times, your odds are much better of getting closer to realism, you know, because you've done it over and over and over, you know, you've learned along the way. 
so, you know, I, uh, yeah, this was a big one for me. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, 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 there's so much of the grass is always greener in there. And the other one is, uh, the, um, uh, and especially with the, the, I'm not, the, I'm not worthy part of it is the looking for the loophole. Yeah. We're looking for a shortcut or a loophole. Right. And like, the again, fact buying the, the tools is, is, instead. Yep. It, it just comes down to you have to do the work. Yeah. You can buy Eddie Van Ga- Halen's guitar from Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. And you're not Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it'd be the You'll exact, be you. the exact guitar. Yeah. And even if yeah. you play his song and you're good at it, you're probably still not going to sound like him. No, it's, you never will. You, you so know. go be you. Yeah. It, be the best you you can be. Yeah. It's, I'll, that's the, the, this is the thing that I've had the hardest time with and especially with when it comes to art art stuff and 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 i apply it to everything whether it's podcasting or whatever it is and you know what i'm going to do that with this with this election too i'm going to be the best me i can be and i'm not going to try to be anybody else exactly i'm going to be true to myself i want to be honest with myself and and if the best of me you know that's i'll accept whatever the honest me is yeah i'd rather have that than than thinking I can be something I'm not or ending up sounding like something yeah. I'm not. Well, I've seen people do art or music for years and years and years, and they're basically just trying to be someone else, you know? And then at yeah. some point it hits them that, that, you know, like, this isn't me. This isn't my voice. Yeah. This is, you know, this is someone else's voice coming through me. And then it's like, you know, you're 30, 40 years old, and all of a sudden you're like, you know, I should probably – develop a style and it's like if you had done that from the beginning <laughs> you know you'd, you'd be have a, a style yeah you'd be a master of your craft at this point <laughs> yeah. i'm not saying famous or anything but you would have put so many still, hours yeah. into it you know you'd be yeah, an, pretty much considered an expert by the what is it you have to do something ten thousand times to be an 10, expert thousand hours yeah so yeah it's yeah that's like i said that one's a real tough one the first one was me too but you know that that part of it um uh, certainly hits home uh let's see the next one is your mind can be a very convincing liar amen to that (laughs) yeah (laughs) because you're you know like me my my mind is telling me i'm not good enough you know like you're not a good enough artist you're not gonna make it so why try you know why why bother yeah why bother you're just gonna fail why bother you know it's yeah yeah. Homer Simpson line of, of what is it? The first step of failure is trying or something like that, you know? <laughs> and it's, um, somebody else said that. I don't think it was Homer Simpson. I'm just kidding. But, um, uh, you know, that, that's kind of the attitude of it though. Is, and that really is what happened. And that's why I don't finish, uh, drawings or different stuff. A lot of times is because those voices, you know, just get too loud. And, and I listen to them because they're always there, you know, well, here's the, the so, this is the, the this to me the one that hits home so much is when I when that voice gets really loud you suck yeah so loud that I get up and I walk away because I believe it exactly so what do we do <clears throat> yeah you put stuff on the shelf you give up you you know you believe it yeah mm-hmm. so so how do we how do we get out of that how you know what yeah. do we, what do we do to get past that? Cause that's the thing that, that, you know, all right, I have a tendency to sit there and do more research than actually do the work. Okay. Well, that's a simple one. Get up and do the work. Yep. But, but when I've got, you know, you stink, you have no idea what you're doing in my head. Yeah. Realistically, what that should be is that should be, the, <laughs> oh my, that should be the, Jeff. Jax has an opinion. <laughs> that should really be the time that you um, are looking at the distorted thinking worksheet <laughs> because that kind of stuff's on there. And if you can catch it while you're doing it, that's where you try to reframe it, you know. And uh, it's not always easy to do that. You know, reframing, we've talked tons of times on here. It's, you know, really difficult to do sometimes. But that's the best I think you can hope for without – digging too deep into anything, you know? Uh. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I, I, I would think about is I think, uh, go do something 
that you are good at her. Well, no, that's not it because go do something easier. Go do something. I, you know, uh, switch modes a little bit. Yeah. Maybe because walk my away. My problem and... is I walk away completely. Yeah, me too. Me too. And, and, and what I need to do is instead of, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean I have to walk away completely. Maybe it just means I have to go and do something that, that, that I've already, you know, either I've had some success or maybe there's some exercise that I can do, you know, cause that's what I've, I've, I've heard, you know, like artists do is they'll just go back and do some basic, you know, something simple and easy easy almost like a something you would have done in class or training thing right. yeah that you know, i know sense. like with guitar sometimes if i'm having a hard time with something i'll just um go play somebody else's song you know yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you exactly. know go play some cover tunes that i love or you know like you know uh you know i i, I guess there's always something on that to-do list that would be easier than the thing that i'm just killing myself on yeah and and you know some it's just putting yourself back in a a positive mindset can make all the difference. Even if you don't go back to that, that night, you know, the, yeah. the problem is that, like you said, we both do this. It's that we just walk away. We're done. That's it. I won't touch something again for months or at, maybe at all, depending on what it yeah. is, you know, and that's, that's not the right, you know, that's not how you want to do things, you know, because really a lot of it is you don't feel good enough because essentially you're afraid you're going to fail at something or you expect to fail at something, whichever, and, you know, that fear of failure really kind of beats you, you know, you beat yourself up over it. But, you know, as we've learned time and time again, it's like <sighs> failing is not what it's gr the gravity it's given. You know, it, it's it's not as mm, heavy yeah. of a thing. Failure should be something that you stop and you look at and you learn from and you move forward. That's what it's supposed to be. That's how you grow as a person, you know. But most of the time when we fail, we just start beating ourselves up. And then we don't want to do anything similar because we'll go, well, I failed last time, you know? And it's like, yeah, and well, maybe you learned something and you won't fail this time, but you'll never know because you didn't try. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, 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 you know, and part of that number two, that convincing your mind can be a very convincing liar. It ends with it's thoughts. Thoughts are just thoughts and it's unhealthy and exhausting to give so much power to the negative ones. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Yep. I'm giving a lot of power to the negative ones. Yep. That's, that's I mean, been my biggest, you know, attempt at shift, uh, you know, over the last couple of years is to not, you know, it's to whenever I start feeling negative, start trying to, you know, think of positive things to kind of offset that, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. That's it. That, that's it. The, and that's, that's what, that's what we do when we start to lie to ourselves is, is we start hyper focusing on one little thing and, at, at, and completely ignoring all the other, you know, things that, that, our counter to that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's literally like we have, uh, um, um, uh, confirmation bias. Yeah. You're right. You actually built are. into our head. Yeah. Like we have all of these positive things in front of us, but we're sitting and going, yeah, but this, yeah, this one thing, there's like 40 things that are going your way and one thing doesn't. And you're, all you do is obsess on that one thing. Yeah, Again. whether it's work, personal relationships, your hobbies, your profession, yep. whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Well, you that's know, I think that's the thing to do is to remember that, you know, it's like that, you know, my we've said it over and over again. There are times where my brain is out to get me. Yeah. When I'm stuck in my head, it's a dangerous neighborhood. Yep. You know, don't believe everything you think. Well, maybe I should stop thinking and start, you know, you know, call somebody. Yeah. Uh, talk about it. Yeah. You know, I. Or, you know, an, another t uh, write it down and. Oh, that's another good one. Do and, some writing. And seriously, write it down and, you know, or yep. walk it through. Like, yeah, worst yeah. case scenario it. And then when yeah. you look at it, you go, wow, that's really not that bad. You know? Yeah. Like, what was the worst thing that's going to happen if a drawing I do isn't as good as I think it is in my head? There's still a chance I could get an A on it. Yeah. You know? And I have. I've gotten A's on things and I'm like, this is terrible. But. You know, I've gotten an A and yeah. it's like, well, OK, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so and again, if I listened to my head, I wouldn't probably wouldn't have turned it in because I'd be like, this is you, terrible. I don't yep. want to do that. You know, you so, totally reminded me of something that that because it's, it's, it's I'm not in this phase in my recovery where I used to have a lot of people, you know, when you're early on as well, do some writing on it, do some writing on it, do some writing on it. And I forget that sometimes you just making making the old pro and con list. Yeah. 
the left column and the right column. Yeah. Put it out on paper. Yeah. See what you see. Or, you know it, what? Write down, do kind of like a gratitude concept, but do it about yourself. Like, only write down things yeah. you like about yourself. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Don't. So, where again, you're switching your mindset to where it's positive, like you said, or the pro and yeah. con. Most of the time, the pro should outweigh the cons as far as the weight of them, but yeah. the cons may outweigh the pros in number. Because you're already in that mindset, you know, it'll be harder to think of positive, but yeah. it's a good, a good exercise either way. That's a great, that's a great way of putting the reframe is to, to, to turn that around that way. Yeah. You know, like I said, it's hard. I, I fully know it. I'm not great at it. <laughs> well, and, and it's you know? funny now that I'm looking at number three, we walked right into it. Yeah, we actually <laughs> did. You know, it's funny though. Like when you were talking about how you expect to fail and you kind of act upon it. Is you know I told um, Tony on Salty Language uh, I don't know if it was on the show or it was beforehand, but I was talking about Tinder right, and how when I'm on Tinder, I will swipe left on people that I think are out of my league. Yep, yep. The whole point of Tinder is that it's essentially anonymous until you, there's a match. They'll yep. never know that you pick, that you said hey that'd be cool unless they also think that, right? So you'd think. The logical thing would be to swipe right on anyone that you're interested in. Not mm -hmm. so for me. I swipe left all the time because I'm like, oh, there's no way. You know, like I'm not good enough basically the whole time. Yeah. And it's like I'm shooting myself in the foot, <laughs> yeah. you know, because what if one of them did like me? I'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. So, yeah, number three is there's more right with you than wrong with you. And like you said, we kind of walked right into this one. Um, you know, it, it's it's pretty, you know, pretty simple. It's just really when you start looking at what you like about yourself, you know, there should be a lot of stuff, you know. Um, and, and again, if you remember anyone who listened a few weeks ago when I uh, posted on Instagram asking for people to give me, like, tell me something about me that they really like. And when I read that, it was like, wow, you know, a lot of this stuff I felt about myself already, but some of the stuff I hadn't thought of. And it's like, oh, wow, that gives me even more now that if I sit down and do a, a pro con, I've got more now to add to the pro list because those are other things I like about myself, you know? So, you know, it's, again, a lot of times the negative thoughts really are taking the smallest thing and catastrophizing it, you know? Um, yep. And it's true. again, distorted thinking worksheet, um, yeah. you know, and th this is because, I mean, this whole thing is totally distorted thinking, obviously. <laughs> um, but, you know, when when you just blow stuff up into like the world's going to end if this doesn't happen or, you know, I'm going to fail if I don't if this drawing isn't perfect. And, it, you know, as we've talked before, it's about progress, not perfection. And, you know, if you try for perfection, you'll never hit it and you'll always be miser miserable because you can never attain it, you know. You can, however, keep making progress, you know, yeah. you can always grow as an artist or whatever it is that you do. You can always learn more or whatever, you know, as a human. So yeah. you have any more to add to that one? Uh, no, we were kind of nailing it. <laughs> yeah. uh, the next one we've kind of talked a little bit about too. Uh, it says you need love the most when you feel you deserve it the least. And that's, it's true. You know, um, when you're beating yourself up, like Heno said, if you call a friend, again, your friend is going to be like, why are you doing this? Like, stop being so mean to yourself. Yeah. You know, kind of, stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself, you know? Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that, that may be exactly what you need, though. Maybe that's, it, that's all it is. Because that'll distract you from the negative And, it, you know, they might be like, hey, dummy, you know, there's a lot of things about you you should be paying attention to. You know, <clears throat> don't let one or two negative thoughts um, define you, you know? So, uh, because overall you're probably like that said at number three, you know, you're probably better than whatever negative there is. Yeah. And you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's wild how like, you know, number three really, you can't break it down to the simplest thing, which is, you know, what, what, you know, like what's right with you. I'm alive and I'm breathing. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, now, okay. Now finding, Finding, accepting love is not always easy when 
you're really interested in beating yourself up. Well, yeah, because you generally will feel like you don't deserve it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the, the topic and, side. And it's hard to hear it too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is, you yeah. know, it's, it's, I mean, I know that I, I've been there. Yeah. It's like the last thing I wanted to hear. Well, and also as we've talked in the past about sometimes like people like me are not good at taking compliments, you know? Oh, there's a great way of looking at this. You know, because, and like I said, we've talked about this before, but it's, yeah. you know, if someone says, hey, you know what, you're awesome. And I'll be like, ah, stop it. You know, like instead of saying, yeah. thank you, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, immediately you know minimizing it. <clears throat> that's, that's, this is really a great way of, 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 you know, coming back to the old, the old, you know, go be of service to somebody else. All right. So if you're feeling unworthy, <laughs> boy, this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm. I just connected something. This is whole thing is if you if you feel like you have low self esteem, go do something esteemable, right? Yeah. You know, it's that it's that same kind of thing where you know if if you feel like you're worthless, well, go do something worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. If you're feeling like you know, if 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 you're in that place when you don't feel like you're good enough. Go do something good. Yeah. And then when you get a compliment, accept it. Yeah. What a great action for, for when you, you – because I don't know what to do when I'm in that place, when yeah. I feel like I don't deserve it. Yeah. Well, that's like – You me. know, it's the when same I, thing when, when I'm I've, seeing everything that's wrong with me. Yeah. Like when I posted, you know, that post asking for compliments essentially and I was just oh, like, yeah. you know, it made me so uncomfortable because there were, you know, yeah. to get compliment after compliment. But it's like this is what you asked for. And the point of it yeah. was to make me uncomfortable because my – the way I – the what's comfortable is wrong. It's not what I want to be. I don't want to say wrong. It's, mm. you know, it's not what I want to be, you know. So taking those compliments and learning to accept them and just say thank you and whatnot is – you know, a step yeah. toward believing as well, yes. you know, because if you don't, you you know, you just keep buying into it. And, you know, we've already talked about that. <laughs> yeah. It's, I think there's the, the, you know, cause I, I tend to, I feel like there's, there's nothing I can do to get myself out of it, but there usually is an action that I can do on any yeah. of these things. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, again, you know, before we move to the next one real quick, it's like, if you're struggling with this kind of thing, go, go f ask for help. You know, a therapist is going to be very helpful in this kind of situation because you're going to need tools. You're going to need someone to keep you kind of pointed the right direction, you know, type of thing. And it, it can be such a benefit to have that person where you check in with them and say, Hey, I've been doing the work. Here's what I'm feeling. And then they go, okay, well, you know, keep doing that or, Oh, okay, let's alter it a little bit. And, you know, like sometimes that's exactly what you need. And I, you know, like I said, I've been, you know, pro therapy for a long time here because I see strides, you know? So, you know, don't feel like this is, you don't deserve help or that, you know, you're anything like that. Cause again, there's people out there that want to help you, you know, let them be of service as we said before, you know? Yep. Uh, number five here is you have to fully accept and make peace with the now before you can reach and feel satisfied with the later. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's oh. funny that kind of almost is like saying the, uh, the old saying of, you know, you can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. Yeah. It, yeah, it really yeah, is yeah. kind of that, you know, it's like, you got to start here and now, and then, you know, but it's so true. You can't be happy in the future if you're miserable constantly, you know, <laughs> like always never good enough. You never will be good enough. Well, yeah, and that this also ties back into that grass is always greener syndrome. Yep. You know, you're 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 not satisfied now. Well, you're just looking ahead, like what's going to make me feel satisfied tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And it's like, why don't you find satisfaction with where you're at right now? Yeah. Even if it's you know going back a few of these steps and 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 just going, okay, I'm alive and I'm breathing. Look, I've talked about how my to do list some days basically are get out of bed put clean clothes on, <laughs> yeah. you know, like really that's, that's the end of my to-do list. And, you know, on days like that, if you get up and you do them, you count it as a win, you know, it, it just don't beat yourself up, but you're right. You got to find happiness in the now. 
or, you know, it's, it, again, it's something hard to do is living in the moment. It's not easy for a lot of people, you know, because like me, I overthink things. I'm always in the future, you know, like, how is this going to play out? What's going to happen here? I have to prepare for, you know, whatever reaction someone has. And, and I just, I just make myself miserable doing it, you know? And I found that the times when I turn that off, when I've been able to turn that off, it's led to me having a better time than when I go into it with all that other stuff bouncing around in my head. Yeah, there was something that I heard early in recovery that baffled me. And it was when people tell me, would say to me, you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Yeah. And I'd be like, what does that even mean? <laughs> you know, yeah, right. I'm sitting here like I am just freaking out or whatever it was, yeah. you know, uh, anxiety, confusion, scared, blah, 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 or whatever it was on any given day. And someone would say, well, you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And it's like, thank you. That doesn't help me. Yeah. <laughs> it was wild. I mean, like, seriously, yeah, like, yeah. what is that supposed to, you know, like, yeah. oh, well, aren't you wise? Yeah, I'll be honest. The first time I heard you say that on um, Angela's Awesome Podcast, I had that exact same reaction. Yeah. To where I was just like, what? <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> but so here's the thing. And, and it was, it was early on and I was a mess. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was in circus land. I mean, you know, it yeah. was like the head was going. Yep. And I remember exactly where I was. It was, I was in my studio apartment. I remember exactly what, what, what I was doing and where I was when I, and I was literally just doing some vacuuming and I was cleaning and it was a beautiful day outside and I stopped and I went, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. Yeah. And what it was is I accepted my feelings for exactly the feelings I'm supposed to have with what's going on in my life. Yeah. And, and it was a moment where I quit fighting. Yeah. It was a, it was the, it was the greatest moment of clarity I'd had in so long. Oh, I bet. Because yeah. I quit future casting. Yep. I quit beating myself up, hoping for a better past. And I literally accepted where I was at that moment with all the emotions and everything happening at that, at that yeah. time. And really the, <clears throat> the way I, I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the way I ended up processing that to where it worked for me was that I basically was like, okay, what is my goal? My goal is to live in the now. And I'm not saying don't prepare for your future financially, you know, none of that kind of stuff, but it's just, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about three weeks from now. That kind of, just try to be in the moment. And I know some things you have to worry about down the road, but, and what it ended up being is to me, it's like, well, being where I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be in the now. I'm not supposed to be in the past because there's nothing but misery there. I'm not supposed to be in the future because I have no idea what's there. You know, all I can really, uh, influence is now. You know, uh, and it's like we've talked before, you know, like worrying about what you can control and yeah, letting yeah, the other right. stuff fall aside. You can't control tomorrow. You can't, like you said, you can't make a better past. You know, I mean, don't, you know, there's things you can do to maybe help with the past, but that's still you moving forward in the moment, you know, like making amends, you know, that's trying mm -hmm. to repair what you did, but that still doesn't undo what you did. You know, yeah. it just whatever. So that's how it ended up finally sinking into me. Um, was because that was one of my goals when I first went into therapy, when she asked me, what do you want from this? You know, what are you looking to get? And one of the things I said is I need to learn to live in the moment because I'm yeah. so bad at it. <laughs> you know, I'm so bad at it just being okay where I am. Well, that was, you know, when we had Clint on last and I asked him about, well, we were talking about that, that, yeah, you know, that day he had a he had a rough day and he went and he decided to go on and podcast and express himself. Yeah. That was truly being in that moment. Absolutely. You know, he could have he could have wished to not be angry. He could have wished to not be sad. He could have wished all these things, but instead he said, I'm angry and I'm sad and I'm gonna let it all out. Yeah. And I'm gonna be in this moment. So therefore tomorrow can be better. Now if he sucked it all in. Yeah. And done nothing about it. Well, maybe tomorrow would have been another day of that and another day. And that's really where, where 
where this makes the most sense to me is usually when, you know, anytime we're in that grief cycle, you need to accept where you're at. Yeah. You know, in that cycle in yep. order to get past it. Yeah. You, really you just do. have to. And part, part of that is just acknowledging your feelings. Yeah. You know, it really is. Yeah. And that's when, for me, that finally that whole thing clicked in. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. You know, yeah. I'm s- supposed to have a broken heart. Yeah. It's that simple. Yep. So have your broken heart and get on with the freaking day. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, number six on here is focus on progress rather than perfection and on how far you've come rather than how far you have left to go. Mm, and yeah. that's, that's the step where I'm kind of in right now is I've been in therapy and doing stuff long enough now that I'm, I'm seeing uh progression, you know, and I'm trying really hard to not seek perfection in anything I do because as you know, Heno and I have talked on here before and we've talked privately about is all that does is paralyze you, you know, like we're, or like we said earlier, you know, when you're starting to look for perfection and then you fall short of perfection, the next time you go to do something, you may start off with the, you know, well, I'm not going to be very good at this. And maybe you'll just put half effort into it or, you know, it can just keep affecting you that way, you know, versus looking and going, you know what, a year ago, I wouldn't have even tried this, you know, that kind of a thing. Like, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have, you know, been mortified if I did this or whatever. It's like, but now I can handle that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I, I went through that and I, you know, I've made progress, you know, again, keeping the positive side of it versus the negative side of it. <clears throat> Cause you're always going to have a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> like he just, funny. yeah, most people are That's... not living a perfect life. And even then it's like, by whose standards, you know, so. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to, quickly look up a book that this reminds me of right now because there's it it was like some simple they were just like simple um tools you know to me it was kind of like spirituality for dummies um um, but one of the things that that it talked about is that um you know about being on a trail being on a on a trail you know and if you're looking at the top of that mountain while you're on that trail you know, versus looking at where you're at at the moment. Yeah. And maybe turn, here we go. It's called The Laws of Spirit, A Tale of Transformation by Dan Millman. And this is, it's not very long. Like I said, I like to call it spirituality for dummies. <laughs> right, right. And boy, did I need it. But it talks about ba- the basic principles Balance, choice, process, presence, compassion, faith, expectation, integrity, action, cycle, surrender, and unity. I mean, it just, it, it, these, these 12 concepts. But one of them was, it was talking about this idea that, you know, you're heading up, you're heading up this trail. And, uh, and, you know, and, and if you just look up at the top of that mountain, you know, it's like, ooh, you know, and I'm, and I'm facing, I've, I've, I have, gotten i think i've done a pretty good job the last month or so with uh getting back on track with with music stuff yeah i quit looking at the whole thing and i started breaking it down into some small bite-sized pieces and looking like what looking at what i had i got into it and i said well wow look at all this i have right now yeah you know um and 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 i stopped looking at it as uh like it even says this in here instead of braiding yourself for messing up and stumbling backward give yourself a pat on the bat for trying making progress and coming as far as you have and that's what i did as i sat down i said okay well look at where i've come well we're going to redo all this or some of this and i don't have to beat myself up for it i've i've done a lot of work already yeah i just have to make a few adjustments and we and and it it was it was the only way I was going to get back into it. And right. these are the kind of the tools you have to hone basically. Yeah, they really are. You know, it's, you're right. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, number seven here is you can't hate your way into loving yourself. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's, you know, telling yourself what a failure you are won't make you any more successful. Telling yourself you're not living up to your full potential won't help you reach a higher potential. Telling yourself you're worthless and unlovable won't make you feel any more worthy or lovable. You know, and like she says here, it's, you know, I know it sounds annoyingly simple, but the only way to achieve self-love is to love yourself, regardless of who you are and where you stand. And even if you know what to, or even if you want to change. 
Yeah. You, know, you are enough as you, just as you are. And, and it goes back to that whole act as if. Yep. Um, you know, that my, the favorite one talking to Angela, it's like that, you know, it's like, uh, you know, don't wait, don't, don't wait until you think you have a bikini body. Put your body in a bikini, and you've got a bikini body. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, right. It's the truth, you, you though. Know? You know, as much as I hate, you know, like when people say, "Oh, but smile" or "just be happy," and it's like there are benefits to that. Like choosing to look at things in a positive light over time, you'll start noticing more and more change. You know, because you're not going into things with a defeatist attitude. You know, you're, you're going into things and you're trying because you're being optimistic, you know? And when you don't, like I said before, it's like, you know, you're just setting yourself up, you know, for, for this cycle, you know, and this cycle is one that will keep eating its own tail for a long time. You know, it's hard to get out of this. I understand. You know, like I said, you know, if you feel like this is where you are, you know, get get help. You know, like I said, I, this was this is actually kind of right where I am, I've been in my last couple therapy sessions is talking about like my self confidence and you know tr- kind of starting to dig into why do I feel like I'm not enough you know where did that start from and you know it's it, it's a lot of work you know because you want to look back at yourself but you don't want to be critical but you you want to find you know like where did this start you know so you can kind of work on it. Yeah, and it's it's uh I mean, this is the whole Stuart Smalley thing. It is hundred you know? percent. I was actually gonna mention that when we were done here basically was I've said it before, Jen said it, you just said it, you know, it's like yeah. it's dumb as you feel doing it. Look in a mirror and do the Stuart Smalley thing or whatever your version of it is, you know, just I am enough. I deserve to be loved. You know, um I can do this, you know, whatever it is. I've done that before. I've looked in the mirror. You see people do it in TV shows all the time, right before a big interview or whatever. They look in the mirror, they straighten their tie or whatever. And it's like, all right, you got this. And then they go, you know, there's something to be said for that. We talked on one of the previous episodes about power um, posing, basically, you know, (laughs) standing a certain way to where you feel confident in that stance and whatever, and then going from there, basically, because it actually will help you you know know what that's a great that i think anytime the one thing i think i've kind of hit realized that so all of these are things that are going on in my head most of my the solutions that we've talked about that have made the most sense to me had to do with getting out of my head and doing something physical yeah and and i'd like that idea of 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 putting yourself in the power pose yeah you know it, it let go of what's going on in your head Put, you know, get physical into your body. Imagine yourself as, you know, as you, as, as, you know, you think you should be. Yeah. And you'll be that. Right. You know, I mean, it's, it's so true. You know, just that, that just your physical, I mean, imagine the opposite. You look in the mirror, you slouch down, you make yourself as frowny as possible and look at yourself and just tear yourself down. Is that going to get you up and going? No, it's I, not. I can speak from experience that that does not get you up and going because that's yeah. essentially what I do. And I don't yeah. mean did. I mean do, you know. Do, yeah. yeah. I Again, I try not to, I you know, but it's it's hard to completely get these thoughts out of your head. Like I said, especially yeah. when they've been there for years and years and years, you know. It's anything reversing that kind of stuff. It, it's going to take time, you know. Yeah. And, and again, the other side of this too is when you act on some of these to move forward, when you see success, it gives you confidence in all, in other areas too, because you, yeah. you know, like Heno with his music, you know, he had been putting it off, putting it off, putting it, and he finally was like, I'm going to do this. Sat down and did it. And now he's talking, you know, like, man, it felt good to get this. And, you know, it's like, that's exactly what you need. It's like, okay, now I have a success to visualize. You know what? I told myself I couldn't do that, but you know what? I did it. You know, yep. and again, you know, I, I, you know, we can't stress it enough. Uh, you know, like <laughs> going back to the Stuart, Stuart Smalley thing, as I said, it's, it sounds so ridiculous, but it'll work, you know, do it every day, do it every time you, you're in a mirror, you know, I mean, preferably by yourself. Cause otherwise people look at you weird, but <laughs> you know, you can, you can grab your phone, put, put the camera on reverse. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't know, even need a mirror. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like I, 
I was looking at um, my Instagram uh, about a week ago, and I was like, you know what? It's like almost every picture I post, I'm not smiling in, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I need to do that more because there are people out there that don't, that think I'd never smile. And that's not the case. I smile mm-hmm. a lot, actually. I'm just, when I'm having my picture taken, I'm usually like, get this over with, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, or sometimes, sometimes it's on purpose. You know, I, I, I took a picture for Snapchat where, you know, I was sticking out my bottom lip and I was like, you know, I've had a migraine for five days kind of a thing. You know, obviously I'm not going to be smiling at that, you know? Um, but, you know, I realized that and it's like, you know what, that, that's the kind of thing to change. Like when you're happy, yeah. smile. If I'm taking a picture and I'm in a good place, why not smile? You know? Yeah. So, you know, and again, that action will, you know, and it, you know, that'll help you around other people too, because if they see you smiling more, they'll want to be around you more. <laughs> you know, if it, you're, it tends to work that way. Yeah. If you're Debbie Downer, they're gonna be like, peace out, you know, <laughs> like, Oh, yeah, and that, and that's, that, that's really, that, that truly is like one of the last things I was thinking about is, is that, you know, you're, you can manifest the, you know, you, you kind of, you, you, you can kind of earn it. Yeah. You know, if, 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 if you don't, if you want people to, to not respect you or, 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 or not want to be around you even or whatever like that, you can manifest that. You can do it just fine. You can also manifest people going, Hey, that's a, you know, that's a good dude or man, she's awesome. Or, mm-hmm. or wow, wow. What a pot. You always have a positive attitude. Yeah. You know, it's like, I get that a lot Mm -hmm. and it's not because I always have a positive attitude, Yeah, but I try to manifest that. And I think I'm going to need that coming up here. I think this has been a great thing for me as far as like an intention is, is, is instead of look, cause I'm going to be looking in the mirror and going, what are you doing? (laughs) Yep. Yep. And I need to reframe that Mm -hmm. to, to, you know what you're doing Yep. and why you're doing it. I got this. Yeah. Yeah, I got this. Mm. It's, it's, rem- or, or even just as much as remember why. Yeah. Or it, honestly, even simple- if you don't know what you're doing, like I said earlier, you can learn. You can yeah. learn it. It's not something you have to be born with or whatever. This is something you can learn, you know? And, yeah. you know, no matter how knowledgeable you are on stuff, there's always going to be stuff to learn in those kind of always. jobs, you know? So it's, yeah. Like you said, it's, it's going to be really important though, because it's probably going to be easy to continuously beat yourself up. You know, oh yeah, like that. I'm good at it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got a lot of practice. Oh yeah. Me too. <laughs> me too. You know, and uh, as I, you know, it's like I'm not going to go into it again. But again, you remember this is totally talking like inside with so other people can hear it, which is weird. Um, <laughs> but do you remember? Oh, was it a month, a month, month and a half ago when I told you what my internal process is? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When, you know, and and when I went through that, and you know, your reaction was just like, "Wow," <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and you're someone who beats yourself up, and I'm like, "Yeah, here's a different level for you." <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks for that journey. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Anyway, you know, um, but we've gone really long on this. We should probably wrap yeah, up. We, um, yeah. But you know, um, again, you know, I can't say it enough. If you need help, seek it out. You know, don't be afraid of it. Just ask somebody, you know, even if it's a friend just to talk to them or whatever, you know, they'll find time for you. And if they won't, well, you know, reconsider where they're at in your life. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. You have anything else to add before we? No, that was just great. That's a up? solid list. I didn't realize how important this was until we got into it. Yeah. It, well, it, it's something that, you know, it's always on my head. So, <laughs> And, you know, again, I've been really trying to, to fight against it. That's why, you know, I wrote that blog and toward the end, I'm like, you know, I know all of this stuff sounds really negative, but I'm not in that mind space. This is just what's happened, yeah. you know, kind of a thing. And same with this. It's like, you know, you can get out of this cycle and even a little progress out of this cycle is huge because it is such yeah. a, it is such a, a, a monstrous one. You know, this, this is probably my biggest self-destruction demon you know, mm. that there is. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, yeah. So hopefully this will, you know, help people out there. I'm going to include, there's like, I've got like four articles that I'm going to include. One of which, which we didn't get to talk about, which is, um, four therapists actually talked about when they realized 
they flip the switch from feeling not enough to feeling enough or as though they're enough. And, you know, I like the fact that it has a positive spin to it. So I'm going to include that one if people want to read it. It, you know, it was a decent read. Um, and then a couple others that are, you know, kind of talking about the, just the topic again. So, um, I guess with that, if you want to continue the conversation, uh, I should probably look at my list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can visit our website at the crazy life podcast dot com. You can email us at the crazy life podcast at outlook.com. Uh, Jen can be found on Twitter at Jen's crazy life. That's Jen with a G. Um, uh, yeah. Hello. Find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. Find me on Facebook, Heno Heiter. Seem to be able to find me everywhere as Vote Heno. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you can also find the show on Twitter at The Crazy Life Pod, where I usually post when the new episodes go up. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Um, you can check out my other podcast if you like to, as I've mentioned it like 20 times on this episode, uh, <laughs> saltylanguage.com or on Twitter at salty underscore language. That show is not safe for work, so, you know, be warned. Um, you can find our Facebook group over at facebook.com slash groups slash crazy life podcast. Um, and my blog can be found at stunami.wordpress.com. Uh, and again, I'll have the link in the show notes if, well, it's always in the show notes, but, um, I'll put it up higher so it's, you know, easier to see, I guess. Um, Shoot, there was something I was just going to say, and I don't remember what it is now. <clears throat> oh, well. Uh, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. Uh, if you're on iTunes, uh, if you'd like to do us a favor, please rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, it helps us get noticed easier when people search uh, the categories that we're in. Uh, if you're using Stitcher or some other podcast app, please use the share or like buttons uh, for the same reason. Uh, yeah, I think that's all of that stuff, isn't it? Yep. So as always, I'll mention that we're not therapists, doctors, trained professionals of any kind. We're just two people, uh, sharing our, <laughs> sharing a lot of our experiences here today. Um, <laughs> and you know, again, if you need help, I've said it 40 times already. If you need help, please seek it out. You know, there's plenty of help out there. Even if money is a concern, go to our Facebook group and look at, the resources thing, you know, go to NAMI.org. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff, you know, out there to help you if money's a concern or just in general, you know, to help you find a, a therapist. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, uh, if you're feeling suicidal or as though you may harm others, uh, please reach out to a friend, uh, you know, or a support, you know, member of yours somehow, uh, or, you know, uh, go to a hospital, tell them you're having a mental health emergency or that you're having thoughts of self-harm or whatever. And, um, you know, please don't wait until you're into the, I'm, I'm going to do it stage, you know, kind of type of thing. If you find yourself planning how you would do it, if you find yourself, even just the ideations of it, any of them, you know, mention it to your doctor, mention it to you. If you're in therapy, mention it to your therapist, for sure. Mention it to your psychiatrist. If you go to one. Um, you know, make sure that, you know, you put as much information into the hands of the people that, that are trying to help you as you can, you know, uh, don't be embarrassed about it. Tons of people have those thoughts. It's really common for those with, with depression and such. Um, you know, so please, again, don't, don't act on that aside from, you know, going to get help. And let's see, what's the other thing here? I can't remember now. I'm totally blank, Tenno. Oh, reach out to somebody. <laughs> I was like, I can't remember what it is. <laughs> reach out to someone. Tell them that you love them. You appreciate them. Give them a compliment out of nowhere. They'll think it's weird, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I've actually done this a few times where I've told somebody like, hey, you know what? I think you're really awesome or I'm very glad you, you're in my life. And they're kind of like, where'd this come from? And it's like, I'm just doing this. Like, I, yeah. this is just who I want to be. I want to tell people while they're in front of me how much I appreciate them, you know? So there you go. Cause you never know, you know, it may, just, it may make their day, may save their life. You never know. So can't hurt to try, right? Like I said earlier, when you're feeling bad, do good, you know? That's it. And, uh, 
yeah, I think that's it. So you want to wrap us up, Heno? Yeah, when you look in the mirror, try saying negative about something about yourself while you wiggle your toes. But it won't <laughs> happen. <laughs>